I, um, is it recording? Yes. Okay. So, I, before I started wiring everything up, I said, let me hook this thing up to a battery and test it. And that way, if there's any problems or whatever, I won't have spent all my time wiring it in. So, the first thing I did was I took a pair of jumper cables and I hooked them to the battery and um, tried it out. And I had bad results. Things, things that should be running were not running. And uh, I started getting very concerned. And the uh, place is closed today and I couldn't call them. And then I started thinking, okay, these jumper cables are number four wire. And it requires two aught wire. So fill now the battery and the wire going to it. And then back right up. Fast, fast. Okay. Now, so after I hooked up this uh, two aught wire and I made just a test piece, and these are all soldered uh, fittings and everything, uh, the thing works pretty good. So I'm going to give you a test right now and show you that. First thing I want to show you is the voltage that it's creating. It is, it's on right now and it's connected to that battery and the battery's fully charged. So it's making, it's a, it's a modified sine wave inverter. So it's making uh, 114, 114 to 116 volts. So, having said that, uh, it's supposed to give the power of a full uh, 15 amp circuit in a home, and it almost does that, but not quite. So I'm going to switch over here and monitor the amperage out of this, and I'll tell you what I see as we go. But I've got an angle grinder, a drill, a heat gun, a professional heat gun, an 1875 watt hair dryer, and a DeWalt circular saw and they go from smallest to biggest. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the angle grinder. This thing is six amps so well less than a, a home 15 amp circuit but they also have startup amperage that has to be accounted for. So here we go. Okay. That runs no problem, and the, the startup amperage on it went to about, about 7 amps, and it's a 6 amp tool. So that works no problem. The next thing I've got is a DeWalt drill, and this is rated at 7.8 amps. So I'll start this. And, and this battery is fully charged. And it's only a single battery. I'll have a dual battery system. And it's nothing but the battery and the inverter. So here it is. So, so on startup, that jumps to about 8.7 amps. And runs steady at about 2.5. So they must have reported the, the peak amperage on this one that they didn't do on the last one. So now we go to the heat gun which is 14 amps and this is a heavy duty cast iron thing and here we go with it. Jumped up to about 16.1 and runs steady at 14.5. So again it's like they reported peak on this. So that works. Then we go to, I don't know if you can see that, 1875 watt hair dryer. So that's above the, um, that calculates out to 16.45 amps at my amperage, my voltage, which is 114, what this thing produces. So that's 16.45 uh, amps, higher than the 15 amps it's supposed to do. I'm going to put it on hot and high. Okay, that jumped up to about 15.2 amps, and then it runs constant 13.6. So that works. And now for the one that won't work. Uh, this circular saw 
is rated at 15 amps and I it'll turn the the safety on this and it won't it's not going to work and I'll show you that but when I put this on standard household current with the amp meter it jumps up it starts up to like 36 amps so I don't really understand why it works on regular household current but in any case and this thing will beep and go into overload protection and all that so here we go Turn it off. Okay, it's ready to go again. So this this thing is not going to work on this. And I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm going to install this and just say I can't use this one tool. So, there you have it. And the gauge on the supply wire really made a difference. And when I have two batteries, it should be even better than that. So that's it. Talk to you soon.